What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, and me, I'm doing super great. It's no joke, obviously, what you see behind me there, that's not an optical illusion. And the title of this video, it's not an optical illusion. I'm lucky enough, I got to play Tekken 8, for real. And I got eight and a half hours with the beauty. And obviously, those eight and a half hours felt like five minutes. Uh, I'm so lucky, I'm so happy. And how did this happen? You know, in a few days, EVO Japan will be played. They'll have an alpha test there. The same alpha test was present in France just a few days ago in Lyon at the Banai Namco offices there. And uh, it was a press event, mostly media journalists uh, invited, but also a lucky few content creators, and I was one of them. So being a YouTuber is not always a curse. It makes me drop my combos, but it also got me to play Tekken 8. <laughs> it's, such, it's such an honor. It, you know, it's such a privilege. Uh, it was so much fun. And uh, Harada was there. Michael Murray was there. It's the first time I ever met Murray, and he was super nice. I got to ask him a ton of questions. I'm going to talk more about that in the future. Uh, and everyone at Panay Namco, the staff, they were super nice to us. Uh, Arsenal T was there. Haven't met him since 2015, and he's still such a nice guy. It was just such a pleasure. So in this video, I'm just going to share my experience with you guys and talk a little bit about the game. But I just want to start by saying that Tekken 8 is absolutely incredible. Uh, you've seen the trailers. Like, it, it le legit makes... Um, Tekken 7, its predecessor, looked like a ultra-dated PlayStation 3 game. Uh, so I just want to say that IRL, up close to the game, even on a monitor, the game is drop-dead gorgeous. And it is so fun to play. Uh, legit, uh, the way it looks like, like right now to me, it's going to be the best game of, Tekken game of all time. It was, it not only is it the best looking game by like 300% in the Tekken series, but it was so fun to play, so dynamic, to the point of when I left that uh, event, you know, after those eight and a half hours, I just checked my phone and, you know, someone, uh, YouTube had recommended me a combo video of Tekken 7 and I click on it and I'm like, it's just insane how uninteresting Tekken 7 is to look at compared to that game. Uh, so yeah, I just want to stress to everyone, like, uh, I had eight and a half hours, and the game is just super, super good. And you gotta remember that this is just an alpha, right? Then it's going to go through a beta, and then you'll have a finished product. So it's still very, very early. But I just want to say that, yeah, as a 27-year Tekken veteran, and arguably the biggest Tekken nerd on planet Earth, I, I was blown away by it. So I just want to say that first impressions are really, really positive. And now I'm going to go into like a more detailed breakdown of everything I observed. Uh, but so yeah, uh, I want to talk about the, the heat mechanic, which is the signature new big gameplay feature, right, of, uh, of Tekken 8. And mostly I'm super positive about it, and I'm going to get into why. Uh, but there are there is a drawback to it with the Heat Engager. Uh, this one I'm a little bit like mixed bag on, but overall the Heat mechanic is really cool and really makes Tekken 8 stand out compared to prior Tekken games. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Heat mechanic last, because that's where I actually have a slight negative on this game. It's almost, it's like 99 positive for me, Tekken 8, and 1% negative. Uh, so I'm going to save the heat mechanic for last. But at first, like, uh, again, I just want to stress, graphics are amazing. Um, the movement is still there and feels just as good as Tekken 7 to me. There were juicy sidesteps. Uh, the backdash felt the same. This is where Arsenal team was like, oh my god, no, the backdash is really bad. But I'm, but I was like, but, but Arsenal team, you're, you're, that's because your backdash is pathetic. You don't know how to backdash. And I was backdashing nicely with Kazuya, uh, so I, I didn't feel this at all. Uh, but Spag also said he felt with King there was a noticeable difference. It felt a bit more um, uh, sluggish. And honestly, nerfing the backdash would fit into their new mantra with Tekken 8, which is aggression, right? They want to push aggressive gameplay. So maybe you would nerf a backdash. But again, I have to stress that I didn't feel a difference with Kazuya. 
So we're going to have to wait and see on this one. More people are going to try it at EVO Japan. So yeah, I only had eight and a half hours. I don't want to say anything definitive, but to me, it felt like Tekken 7 movement, I'm happy to say. The new bound, so this is the back backflip bound, which Paul does with back one two, or Kazia, you know, down forward one, second hit of twin pistons. That's down forward one, hold down forward, press two. Uh, the new bound is extremely generous. It's the most generous bound I've ever seen in a Tekken game. It backflips them with a, with a spin, uh, so like a gymnast, backflip 360, and it throws them very high vertically, and they come down pretty much next to your feet, like where you did the bound, and it, it just extends combos in a way I haven't seen in a Tekken game. To the point where you just do bigger combos than you did in, in previous games. And that might sound scary, right? Because Tekken doesn't need bigger combos, in my opinion. But this is how they fixed it in, in, in two ways. They made stages bigger, so the wall is less of a, of a presence, right? Uh, especially Colosseum, like, it's more rare to get someone to the wall. But also, noticeably, they actually nerfed all of the post-bound free hit, you know, wall enders, wall travel. Uh, you know how Tekken 7 Season 3 gave everyone a post-bound string, you know, like Feng Wei's down forward 4, 2, 1 plus 2, Jin back free, Zen 1 free, but double backflips the opponent, throws them super high, guarantees a wall splat, you, you can run in from like 20 miles away and do your biggest wall combo. That seems to be gone in Tekken 8. All of those strings keep the opponent very close to the ground. So they just hit the wall and then fall down immediately into a tech crawl. So actually they, they nerfed that part of, of combos. Uh, so I think this is a good change. Uh, so it's, it's more rare now for you to get a, a, bi a big wall splat into a big wall combo. So it kind of forces you to use uh, more of a two hit. So with Kazuya you would do bound and then you would kind of have to do that bound again down for one down for two to keep them high but again you wouldn't get as much distance so that's a compromise at least right uh and then yeah you can double bound that's a reality you can uh if you want to you can do the normal bound backflip spin throw them onto the wall and now on the wall you can do your heat burst so that's manual heat and then get the heat bound into wall combo. And these are super flexible. You can, you can do heat burst, heat bound, and then normal bound. It's extremely flexible. So if you have your heat intact, you haven't used it yet, at any time you can do a double bound in a combo, however, however you want to. <laughs> um, and then, all oh right, uh, character intros. Uh, you've seen it now, like especially in uh, the June trailer, you saw it. Uh, all of the characters have like lore intros with each other. Very reminiscent of like Mortal Kombat 11. And it's, ex it's exceptionally well done. And that intro, their dialogue with each other, even carries over into the, the ready fight screen. So it's, it's seamless. And it's so good. Like, um, you saw June and Kazuya, you'll see that entire sequence, by the way, in my Kazuya breakdown video. Uh, but also, like, Paul and Law, they have their buddy intro, and, and they end that sequence, ready, fight, by slamming their fists together. And so does Jin and Lars, their friends, let's spar. Uh, but Jin and Kazuya, they have that uh, trailer one sequence, you know, where, oh my god, this is the end the final battle, and they slam their fists together aggressively, and there's sparks everywhere. Fight! It's so good. And Murray told me, like, with this game, they're really trying to push personality and character. And I'm sure you've picked that up in the character trailers, right? And it, it certainly carries over into the fights themselves, and also the countless new win poses the characters have that are super dynamic super cool uh, but present i'm just trying to stress that the presentation in general and production values it's just so much higher than, than tekken 7. 
Uh, and also, Murray stressed that the budget for this game is way bigger than 7. But I mean, that's money you see on the screen constantly. I mean, it's not like he, he had to say that, right? Uh, and the po there are post-Rage Art KO animations. And you saw it in the lore trailer. He comes down and that... You know, and then you'll see Kazia's post. Uh, and those of you who think uh, Jack has the best Rage Art. Yeah, you're, you're gonna see Kazia's when he KOs with the Rage Art. And it's just chef's kiss. It's the best. Best Rage Art. Uh, move lists easy to navigate plus tips. This is something I really liked. The alpha test already had move lists for the characters. So, you know, you press start, pause, move list. And here it actually had divided the move list into sections, which I thought was really good. And it even had a section called, oh, these are your key attacks with this character. Oh, a tip for Kaz, he has forward four, right split kicks on block. When, that, when that's blocked, try fishing a counter hit or getting a counter hit with abolishing fist down for two. That's, a, that's the, the most classic Kazia frame trap. And they include it in the move list. Try doing this sequence. And they, uh, do, do you know, uh, on the throws, it shows the throw breaks. Oh, giant swing? Oh, you break this by pressing one. So, uh, no, I gotta say, they've really updated the move lists, to say the least, to help out beginners and casuals. And even people like us, super sweaty Tekken nerds, who've been playing for 27 years, who still eat a few of those king uh, chain throws, right? But now I can see. Oh, oh, I break that one by pressing two. So uh, I thought that was super good. Oh, dirt buildup. You might have seen this in a, in a couple of trailers now, but there's dirt buildup on the characters. So when they get knocked down, roll around on the ground, they get a layer of dirt on them. And this can actually build up until there's quite, quite a bit of mud on them. Especially on June's stage, like there was a big buildup of it. Uh, so again, just a really cool little detail that adds adds a lot to the game, I thought. Uh, so main man, what what was the character select screen like? Uh, well, mostly a placeholder. It was mostly like a, a gray uh, background, so I, I don't think that was final at all for the alpha test. But something that was interesting is that the characters, when you, when you held your cursor, characters like over them, they were actually rendered in 3D. So Kazuya would stand like this, and as soon as you selected him, he would go, hmm, something like this. So, you know, very, very cool. And you've seen the, the fight uh, load screen there. And that's also something I want to mention. I, haven't, I don't have that much experience with PlayStation 5, 5, but, er, 5, 5, but everyone says, you know, uh, the SSD, uh, it loads everything in one second. This game still had like noticeable load times. It's fa it was faster than Tekken 7, but it was still a you know a, a load time that you felt. Uh, so I know I don't know. Maybe I expected it to be faster, but again, this is on alpha, so we'll just have to wait and see. It's still super early. <coughs> um, there's a traditional announcer. Uh, so you know, uh, in game, ready, fight. Prepare for the next battle. It's your, it's your generic trailer guy with a deep voice. So for those of you who have really enjoyed the character trailer announcer, Lenny Hart, uh, classy lady, voice actress of Anna in Tekken 5, I think. Uh, the old Pride announcer, you know where they fight? Uh, yeah, she's not in-game. Um, so yeah, I guess, I mean, she was really out there and added a really nice personal touch to the trailers. I think I'm so boring that I, 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 I do prefer the generic one. If you if you were to hear it for the coming eight years, do you want to hear Paul Phoenix? Or do you want to hear Paul Phoenix? I'll, I'll take the latter, but it really spices up the trailers, yeah. And another so cool effect that I noticed pretty early on, and you might have seen it behind me now, is that the characters are always rendered in front of the HUD itself. So the fir for the first time ever in a Tekken game, the HUD, the health bars, for example, are never covering the characters. Really pay attention. Do you see that? How his head is above the health bar? 
It's all about the characters this game, let me tell ya. The characters are always front and center of the action. And you gotta love it. I mean, it, it, you might not think this is much, this effect, but to me, I don't know, it's it's super cool and super slick. Uh, wall Bounce, uh, those of you who are fans of Wall Bounce and Wall Crush, they're both gone. I couldn't see a single Wall Bounce, and uh, yeah, the Wall Crush was just noticeably gone. But again, who even enjoyed the Wall Crush outside of like a Claudio thing? Maybe Alyssa player. I never really used it. Uh, and I, I play Tekken daily. I never really see anyone use it. So uh, those mechanics are gone. And now here's a big one. Here's a big juicy one. Uh, raid charts are universally minus 13. <laughs> this, this is what it seemed like. Yes. Uh, again, me, Arsenal, T, and Spag played. And it's like, it seems like raid charts... They, they are definitely not launch punishable anymore. And I couldn't do a 14 frame punish. So it looks like they are like hotcakes now. Rage Arts are minus 13. So yeah, if you thought Rage Arts were spammed in Tekken 7, like get, get ready for Tekken 8. <laughs> You're gonna see a lot of Rage Arts. But thankfully, you know, they're really cool. They're really pleasing on the eyes. Uh, but yeah, th this is a change where I, I just don't agree. But again, you, you have so little health left when you do a Rage Arts that a 13 frame punish could kill you. But that's the thing, you should be gambling your life with a Rage Arts. But this could be... Uh, this could be another way of like, catering a little bit more to beginners and casuals, rather than hardcores. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, I just had to mention that. And yeah, Gigas is dead, you might have noticed in the Jack trailer, but it was even clearer that Gigas is buried. He's gone, he's six feet under. This was much clearer during the alpha itself, where Jack actually has Gigas overkill throw. That big throw where he throws them high up and then shoulders. Jack has that now. And if you want to talk about the signature Gigas attack, I mean, that's it. So yeah, G Gigas is dead. And I saw this coming, I've said this for a long time now, but I always saw him as a failed design. I mean, don't you agree that if he, if he was in a Batman Arkham game, do you think he would be the boss of a specific level or chapter of that game? No, he would be the henchman of the boss. You would have 20 gigas coming at you. It's, it just looks like a background figure because the, the design just lo always looked like a work in progress. Um, I always felt his Anubis preset was much better than his original design. Uh, so yeah, Gigas, Gigas is gone, and uh, I don't know. He, he won't be missed, at least by me. I guess my heart goes out to the few Gigas mains out there, but there's like two of you. So Jack will be now the big pile of heap, right? The big old muscle. Uh... Low get-up kicks. You know how much these are mashed in Tekken 7? Ah! Oh, hope for a counter hit and you would often get it into a combo. That's gone. They don't even knock down anymore. Low get-up kicks. Uh, they don't even knock down on counter hit. You know the one when you're on your stomach, feet towards the opponent, and you do a kick and it always launches even on normal hit? Uh, nope. Doesn't even knock down. So, this is a change where I'm like, this actually seems like a buff to veteran players. I feel like that's something that beginners uh, or more casual players would use more, like intermediate. So, I, I did like that one. Kip up, and again, you know how much uh, intermediate players like to spam kick, kip up. They don't knock down anymore, and there's a new animation. So, you, you eat that, but you don't get knocked down. Uh, low parry has a new animation, and low parry has been nerfed. You, you, get, you get a mini juggle now. You, you can no longer bound. You know, big backflip bound. You can't do that. Uh, so you only get a float and a mini juggle. So this is definitely a nerfed low parry. And this means lows universally are buffed now in, in Tekken 8. Because you, you risk uh, way less now doing like a minus 12 low. 
Uh, again, like if it's blocked, you eat like a while standing 4-4, you know, uh, something like that, uh, that type of punish. But in Tekken 7, you have to understand that no matter how safe your low is on, uh, there are minus 10 lows in Tekken 7, like Josie down 4. That sounds really safe, right? But yeah, but in Tekken 7, you know, it can always be low parried into a juggle featuring a bound. That can mean, with a wall, that can mean 70 damage, right? So tech, in Tekken 7, lows were always risky, like low pokes. So universally, lows have been buffed due to low parry getting nerfed in Tekken 8. No more bounds. Uh, the, the tackle, running tackle, it's still blockable. It's still blockable. But it also had a new animation, so I don't think it gives as many frames as it does in Tekken 7 for the aggressor. Uh, I thought the life bar was a little bit hard to read at times. There's a, a lot going on with the life bar, the health bar. So sometimes I was like, ah, how much health do I have left? Uh, but, you know, you get used to it. An instant rematch was there, but that's to be expected, I think. I just wanted to stress that it's there. So, uh, that was a lot of stuff I had notes on. And now I'm just going to talk about the heat mechanic, which is obviously the defining feature of Tekken 8. There's never been anything like it in a previous Tekken game. And overall, I thought it was really, really cool. But here is where I'm going to go get into a little bit of a negative. Where I was a, a little bit like, eh, I don't know if uh, this floats with me, but we'll see. Might grow on me. So, uh, the positives of the heat mechanic. Uh, it's, it's a really, really cool feature where you can either hit R1 to do heat burst. This is where you manually get into heat and then you can follow that up with a heat bound and that heat bound if you did it in the neutral on the opponent uh, I think it was like slightly plus on block on hit it's very plus uh, and then you're heat mode right and you have 10 seconds of a powered up version of your character or you do a heat engager uh, five to six of them on each character uh, Kazuya Devil Fist, Ford for two, which is a demon paw, or his back four homing, also a heat engager. So you hit that, run in into frame advantage on your opponent, and now you're in heat, and you have two tokens. So remember, manual heat, one token, heat engager, two tokens. And these tokens mean either, if you have two of them, either two heat dashes, or one heat dash into heat smash, which is basically the new rage drive. But as soon as you do that new Rage Drive, Heat Smash, this was pressing R1 again, by the way. As soon as you do that, you exit Heat. And it's over. Um, so, the positives with Heat is that you basically have access to a second version of your character. Like, you have no idea how much Heat changes your character. And it really pushes the, the identity of your character. Like with Paul, when he's in Heat, he gets a super death fist and he can charge up his attacks now. You saw in his trailer, like down one, two, or down to one. You charge that, he comes down so hard in heat. It blue sparks, he screams, Rah! super cool by the way. And he breaks the opponent's guard into a guaranteed down one plus two shoulder. And you know, the death fist is powered up when he's in heat. So it's like, it, it, it really tries to push his identity. Kazuya turns into devil. Jin gets omen stance. You know, he's fused with the devil now in the lore. Um, and then King, when he's in heat, his throws are enhanced. And he wants to throw as much as possible. Because any throw he connects, he refills his heat bar. And heat also gives his jaguar dash when he points and runs. Armor, hyper armor. Uh, so it's like, it pushes the wrestler and this new idea in Tekken 8 that, yeah, King is actually a big dude. He's like 300 pounds of solid muscle, so he can absorb attacks. So it's really pushing identity. And, you know, Kazuya turns into Devil, and you know what Heat does with him? It also enhances a ton of his attacks. It gives him a ton of new attacks. Right? And, and then you have, on top of that, uh... Heat dash, heat smash, you get a second bound. Heat just really transforms, you know, your character and how you play that character. It all, almost made me think a little bit about Bloody Roar, like if you're really old. A fighting game where you could turn into a monster for a limited time and you're a powered up version of your character. 
Um, so I just, I really like that idea and it adds a lot of depth and nuance to Tekken. There's a second version of your character where they go Super Saiyan. And you're, a, and this character plays a little bit differently. And you have act, well, with Kazi it was a lot differently, you know? And you have access to this character for, for 10 seconds once per round. But also if you do certain attacks, like Kazi has Shikue! Uh, that eats up, that parry eats up half at heat bar. So it's, it's a little bit more complicated and it's something we're going to have to research and lab out once the game drops. Um, but heat was a lot of fun and you could customize uh, combos with a double bound into heat and uh, uh, you could do a lot of amazingly fun things. Uh, so, so heat overall, I'm just trying to say, was for me like re really positive. I had so much fun with Devil Kazuya. Um, so super positive. Uh, just, uh, this is where I come to my only gripe that I felt with, uh, with Tekken 8. And it was tied to the heat mechanic. And, and I know Spag and Arsenal T were a little bit worried with this as well. But this is where I have to confess that this is a problem. And I'm going to explain it soon. But I think it's going to be an issue for us who are like, who have gray hairs and who are Tekken dinosaurs. Like ultra Tekken nerds. Hardcores. Tryhards. Sweat lords. <laughs> we might get annoyed at this. And I, I don't know if a casual market is going to get annoyed at it. Probably not. But so it's the heat engager. You know that attack where they do a, a power mid, you knock them down, they back roll, and the aggressor runs in, and you know, uh, slow down, screen goes blue. You get two tokens. That, that, what you just did there. So it's very powerful. And that's how you want to go into heat, because having two tokens is a pretty big deal. Compared to manual transformation, where you get one token. And when you did that manual transformation, you were quite vulnerable. You know, it actually takes a time for that cutscene to start. And you could, I could get interrupted while Kazi was trying to go devil. Like, oh, oh! And even when I went devil, I felt like he could just punch me in the face afterwards. So, like, Heat Engager, obviously, is where you want to go. You get way more rewarded. Come on, you get two tokens. So anyway, anytime you land that, kablam! And it wasn't that hard, like with certain moves, because they're powerful, right? Like Paul's forward four, which I detail in his video, where I talk about him. So you land that, and let's just say Arsenal has just landed it on me. Like, I get knocked down, and again, he doesn't have to do anything. You don't have to press R1 when you land a heat engager. Your character automatically does it. This is completely automated. And I get hit, and then I back roll. Ah! And then I, I'm forced to take a mix up. It's a hard mix up. I have to take a 50 50. There's nothing I can do here because I'm so minus. Uh, so I guess what I dislike is that this uh, puts Tekken into. It reduces Tekken's intricate gameplay into take a fucking guess. And I don't know how to feel about that, because I've always felt with Tekken is that the beauty of Tekken is that you never have to take a fucking guess, unless it's Leroy's Hellsweep or Lay's Hellsweep. You always have options. Uh, a good analogy for this is, you know how you can get annoyed at Kazuya's Vortex? You know, you get Hellsweeped and you tech roll and it's like, oh, I got Hellsweeped again, or I had to take the mix up again. Yeah, but I mean, the beauty of Tekken is that when you eat that first Hellsweep, you can just stay on the ground. Right? You don't have to tech roll. You're not forced to. You can stay on the ground. You can roll on the ground. You can do a kip up. If, if, if you're standing in the neutral and Vikasi is trying to force a 50-50, step left to option select. That is the beauty of Tekken and that comes with its intricate 3D movement that has lateral depth movement. It's like you always have multiple defensive options. But the heat engager reduces all of that to literally take a fucking guess. Because you don't choose to backroll when you eat that. It just does that automatically for you. It's an automated sequence. And you backroll, and then it feels like you're minus 10 to 20. I swear to God, I couldn't even dick jab interrupt. Can't dick jab, can't sidestep, can't backdash. You can't do shit other than take that 50-50 from a super enhanced character, by the way, that has just gone super sane. Like, when Paul did this, I was like, Jesus, this is oppressive! 
Because even if you guessed right after the Heat Engager, like say Paul does a Death Fist, when he does that Enhanced Death Fist, or, or honestly any Heat Engager in this game almost, and when they are in Heat into Dash, again your character goes, ah! You can really tell like on the animation on that block stone, like, you're again like lock completely locked down and forced to take a mix up so this ties into how fighting games these days you, you know fighting games for modern fighting games fighting games fighting games fighting games hello joe biden they're trying to make them more accessible to beginners right uh that, that's a modern way of doing fighting games it just seems like it to me uh, every fighting game i've looked at the last five years we're trying to make them easier and more accessible for a casual market. Because fighting games have always been too hardcore, I guess. Uh, and this could be another step uh, in uh, that alignment for, for Tekken. Aligning with those goals. Because, yeah, this is way more casual friendly, I think. Uh, you, you, you hit that heat engager, and then automatically your opponent stands up and you get a free 50-50 where they have... They can only guess. They, they have no defensive options, right? Uh, but so this is where we can say, at least it's only once per round, right? You don't get forced into that situation over and over and over. It's once per round. And this is a compromise a Sweat Lords can, can, can do, maybe. That's a, this might be a necessary sacrifice, right? Um, but I also have to stress that this was after eight and a half hours of testing, and it's still only an alpha test, so we don't know how much of this is going to stay, right? And carry over into the final product. But uh, it was still a little bit annoying. But again, it happens once per round. Right? So, yeah, might be a sacrifice we have to make. Uh, but again, I just I don't want to come off as too negative. Because, like, 99%, this game only brought joy to my heart. Right? It was so amazingly good to the point of, like, coming back to Tekken 7 was just like... Oh, even after eight hours, it felt like pain coming back to Tekken 7. Like, that game was so much fun, and it's so good looking. It's so dynamic. I love having a super version of my character. Like, uh, Te Tekken 8 Kazuya is so giga chad, but just playing Tekken 7 Kazuya, it's just like, it's almost a chore. <laughs> it's like... Uh, the game is so good. But yes, so sacrifices towards making it more accessible to beginners. Ray charts are minus 13. Uh, and yeah, you're, you're forced to take a 50-50 where you can't option select, you have no defensive options. That's gonna happen once per round. Unless your opponent does a manual uh, heat, right? But so yeah, uh, they say it's more aggressive, but... Yeah, you're not gonna want to eat a heat engager. So you're gonna play defensively there, but you are going to eat it though, because they are powerful. Um, so we, we just need to test this more. But so I, I hope I covered, like uh, you got an idea of everything I saw. Uh, throw break seemed the same, by the way. Uh, so yeah, those were my notes on the game. And again, I need to fa thank Binay Namco for inviting me. It was such a pleasure and such an honor. And I, I legit feel so spoiled. And I really hope you guys also get to try it soon. I think we're going to do more alpha tests at tournaments. Uh, so hopefully a tournament in your region. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed my breakdown here. And if uh, you have any questions, I'm available on my stream, obviously, all the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, the game is just so great. <laughs> it's so great. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my first impressions of Tekken 8. And I hope you have a, a lovely day. And check out my cup, man. Oh, yeah. Do you have that cup? Oh, oh you don't.